Brian. Brian. What's up, brother? How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good, man. Welcome to the party. Real people, real talk. Appreciate you. So how was class? Here, man. I was, was good, man. I was good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Taught him. Uh, we did a little uh, Cinewali, Cobb Cobb. Did uh, nice. I'm having a because they're they're so new. Some of them really don't know how to punch at all. Okay. You know, and so like they do they do these like little T Rex punches. So I had them do um, you know, that speed drill where you hold the you hold the mitt and then you try to slap their hand away. And it was actually it was actually really cool to watch a lot of the uh, the clicking, you know, when they kind of get it all of a sudden. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's how you hit, you know. <laughs> my daughter, my oldest daughter, she just uh, she just found her interest in Belinda Walk. So I got her coming with me to train with uh, Guru Joe. Nice. Uh, yeah, she's she's enjoying it. So I'm having fun. Like, I can't wait till she's like three, four months in, and I can start doing that with her on our spare time. Right. So I'm there you go. Like, yeah, I think it's good to have my daughter learn from somebody else. Sometimes learning with dad is too much pressure. I'll wait till sure. she's a little bit older. I just want to have fun yeah. for now. Yeah? yeah, yeah. Well, that's like with my son. Like, everybody asks her, like, does he train with you? I'm like, no, nah, I don't want it to. I had too many friends who had, like, parents as martial artists, and they yeah. hated the martial arts because their parents forced them to go do it, you know? So I'm like, yeah, oh, when he's ready. You know? Sorry, there was a delay there. On my own. Oh, it's all good. Yeah, no, I was just saying, like, so when he's ready to go, you know, then I'll I'll be here. And I tell him all the time too, like, whenever you want to do it, we'll do it. You don't have to be in class. It can be one on one if you're embarrassed. But I figured by the time he gets into high school and he gets a girlfriend, I think we're gonna be doing some training. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, that's right. why I got my daughter doing jujitsu. I want to make sure they have jujitsu. Like, right. I make them go. I tell, I just mm -hmm. tell him like, Look, guys, try to make the best of it because you got to do it. Right. You don't right. have you don't have to compete. You don't have to compete. You don't have to do it. I just need you to learn. Go have fun. Right. Learn. It's important. Don't worry. You get over losing quick. All that shit. You know what I mean? You make friends. Yeah. Yeah. And then at home, at home, whatever they've been working on in class, I just play fight with them. I don't try to okay. teach them. I just play with them. And then I'll try to do that move on them. So they got to defend it. Then they, it coaxes them to want to do it back. Right? Now it's, right, I've created yeah. a So we're learning without me having to be like, don't do that. Don't do this. You know? Right. So I don't want to yeah, do that. Yeah. No, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. So yeah. what makes you want to teach? Uh, you know, I don't know. Just always when I, from the time I started martial arts, I was back like 17. I just, I just always wanted to do it. Now, I guess right now, like I feel, um, I, one of the things that I, I feel like it helps is like people with like uh, depression or like I had a few kids like who had, were, were dealing with some shit, you know, and uh, even friends who like are dealing with like something inside, like, you know, um, yeah, being able it. to give them something to, I tell everybody like, like rage is a different beast, right? Like you can't meditate rage away. You can't take pills away. We're in this society where it, all they're doing is, is giving us pills left and right. No matter what you have, what's going on, you need a pill, turning people into zombies, you know, and really what they just need to do is smash something, you know? And I right. want to give, I want to give somebody that laser focus, you know, where you take that anger, that rage, turn it into intent instead of, and, and be able to unleash and open up. So I guess almost for like a mental well-being, you know, um, I do, I, I want everybody to be able to feel like they can defend themselves. You know, I don't, um, when I was a little bit younger, you know, I, I was bullied a little bit, you know, I never, I don't like that feeling. I don't want, I want to help other people not have that feeling, you know, and I just love the art, all the arts, you know what I mean? Like just collecting, learning new things. Now that I'm teaching, like understanding, like, wow, you really do learn, you know what I mean? While you're teaching, like there's, there's so many moments where all of a sudden, like my student will ask me a question and I'm like, well, it's because of, and in my head, like, I'm like, oh yeah, it's because it's because I'm moving you. But like for the longest time, I was just doing it. Does that make sense? You know, yeah, like I just didn't, like that, that little gem I really didn't see, you know? I think, I think it's like, uh, I was watching my kids today. Like I was, I was saying they were training the stick. So I took my kids to the gym with me while I was doing my lessons and they practiced and then they would play. They had the crash mat. You know what I mean? They're yeah, having yeah. a great time. And uh, my oldest one, she was working on, she was doing her number uh, six, right? And Bella was watching and then I had Bella just doing a simpler one. And then just on its own, the older one comes over. And starts teaching. And I just say, I'm just sitting there watching. I'm like, she just learned this shit like two weeks ago. You know what I mean? Right, right. But 
here's her sister who knows less. Mm -hmm. And she was just sharing whatever she knew. And I was like, yeah. that's, that's really it. Yeah, that's yeah, the point. Yeah. Some, more, yeah. some know more than others, but we can always share something. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. As long as we keep yeah. it genuine, like not to look a certain way. I just yeah. want to share it with you, you know, because it makes gives me benefit. Why right. wouldn't I? I love it, and I hope you love it too, right? You know, that's I think what makes the good teachers because now it's right. not it's not about uh, like um, their teaching is a self feeding plate for their ego. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like I'm so badass. Look at me. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like no, man. Let me just share this with you. We'll have fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. For the best. Yeah. That's why, like, I'm not, all my you know my students here were actually good friends you know what i mean because we're all pretty much the, the same age and stuff and you know even though i'm their teacher or their sifu or whatever you know like we're, we're still in here joking around like i've, I've made a, a great group of friends just with this little group you know and i got my other group where i go train and i do the catch wrestling and the mma and you know so it's just nice to have all these different pods of people and martial arts bring so many people together in, in that kind of way right yeah i think um I think that's something that like non-traditional martial arts brought that I think is underappreciated yeah. by traditional martial artists. The gym culture that you see like in a boxing gym or in a wrestling mm -hmm. match and stuff like that, it's much different. Like traditional martial arts is very, you know, serious work, but it's like very strict regimen. If you look at traditional yeah. Like, traditionalism. Yeah, there's a hierarchy and sure, everything. Yeah. And I'm sure there's like um cultivation happening there by a different way. Uh, you know, they're, they're obviously getting, people are sticking around. So they obviously feel like they're part of something. So something right. makes, you know, there's definitely a leadership role and an encouragement and shit like that. But I just think it's, it's like forced, it's too stiff and rigid. And right. when people were able to like, like you say, joke around, mm -hmm. say shit, go personal, <laughs> not go personal, talk right. shit, right. Calls, it makes it way more fucking genuine. Yeah. And it's more fun. They're learning easier now. They're, they're actually obtaining that information instead of being so stressed out, you know, I, I got to know this or my Shidoshi is going to hit me with the freaking stick, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, way, I've had... I... Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say, but that's just like when I did ninjutsu, it was very militant, you know, but we did, we were a very tight group of individuals. Don't get me wrong, but it was still very, when it was class time, it was, it was militant, you know? So, and it was like, ah, oh, you know, like you got this hour or two where you're with these people and you can't really be personal with them, you know? Yeah. And so unless they're willing to meet up with you and, and do like side training, you know, or just go get a freaking beer or a pizza or something after class, you know, then you just missed out on making a friend because it's just don't talk, silence, you know? Like, okay. As an instructor, when you like have, you know, cause word of mouth goes around, somebody will invite over somebody over to come try your class. Mm -hmm. How do you, what is your process as an instructor to like, okay, do I want to teach this person? What do you look for if you, before you take them on? And do you consider his effect and dynamic in the culture you've created at that present time? Um, I think like when I, that's, that's, I think I'm, I'm kind of new at that part. You know, that's actually a really good thing uh, that I do, that I'm starting to see because all the different personalities and stuff like that, you know, um, so like when, when they, when they first come in, I just try to see, is this, is this someone I, I want to hang out with? Cause I got to see them three days a week for an hour for sure. You know what I mean? I got to deal with them, you know I mean? And then I want to watch, you know, um, you know, I guess maybe the way they talk or the way they're kind of handling themselves, are they acting like a tough guy? Or is there a lot of talk about like, you know, going out and just like starting fights or, you know, things like that for sure. You know, I just, I, Right now, yeah, it's just everything's been word of mouth, though. So it's kind of just been like friends coming in with friends. So if that guy's cool, usually his friend's going to be just as cool. But I, I don't know. I guess I really don't have anything yet, to be honest with you. You know, yeah. I'm still learning that. I'm still learning that. I think I think we're constantly at work. I just kind of look to see, for me personally, like, I look to see how they treat the students. Mm -hmm. Like, with me... I'll be honest with you, unless I had like an intro or it's a one-on-one, -on -one, but like if you're doing class, I'm going to watch you. I'm going to make you feel welcome, but like, I'm not eyes on you the whole time. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So my interaction mm -hmm. with you, your first class is going to be probably a little bit uh, limited. I'm not going to have much by that, but How the way you, do you have in your class uh, on Monday nights, like 18 people. See, okay. So I, it's still very personal with me. I'd still like tonight. I had three people. Yeah. But like you know? Fridays, I, sometimes I have six. Okay. 
You know, yeah. Wednesdays is like twelve. Like the conditioning, like it's growing like crazy. I'm I, like, thank God. It's yeah, just that's beautiful, it's, man. It's just taken off. Like there's its own culture. I can sit back and I watch all these people like talking and shit. It's beautiful. I'm loving it. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's yeah. a good thing we got going on there, and hopefully it gets better. But like for me, I don't want to ruin it. You right. know, I don't want to mm -hmm. ruin it. So one person can really affect like the whole vibe. No, that's true. You know, so it's like, okay, as long as the person I feel is like genuine, like, like if they're hitting pads with somebody who's like smaller than them, are they going to smash the pad to fucking look like a powerhouse? Right. You know, or are they going to be like mindful on how they swing? You know? Right. Is he actually going to listen to what I'm teaching and try it? Or is he just going to like show me what you did from your other style? You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. subtle shit like that, that tell me. And if I see that like he's making or she's making an effort to like, you know, hey, get to know my partner while we're working and, you know, being like doing those kind of things. Then for me, that's like, OK, potential. Man. I'll put you on like a three month. I'll watch how mm. you is this like first class being polite? Is this uh, you know what I mean? Let me see how long yeah, this lasts. Yeah. And then right. after three months, I'm like, OK, I'll invest. But until then, I don't invest as much. Like, I'll help you out. But like my people who've been there longer, they get more of my attention. I get you. I get you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, like I had uh, one of my one of my students brought a friend in once and you could tell he was definitely trying to show off, not listen. And so it was just kind of like, all right, you go over there and you train with your buddy. And then he left and I didn't even bother no follow up calls or anything like that, just because I didn't I didn't like the attitude. But that would honestly, that's the first time that I've had to deal with anything like that. Otherwise, all all my students so far have been uh, pretty much genuine people. You know, but like, again, it's all been word of mouth and it's all been friends bringing in friends. I haven't done any big advertisement yet, you know. Yeah, just let it grow in the way it's grown, man. D don't broke it. Don't fix it. Right. <laughs> right yeah. yeah, for sure. So I'm wondering who is who is let me ask it like this. Who is your biggest influence when you started training martial arts? And who's your biggest influence now that you've been training a while in martial arts? My biggest. um well, I guess that when I started, I was 17. So I was still, it was still the movies and stuff like that. So it was like the Chuck Norris, Bruce Lee, you know, Great. Dolph Lundgren, you know, yes. Don the Dragon Wilson. You know what I mean? Like, I like Van Damme good. personally too. He was good yeah, too. Van, yeah, Van Damme's a little Canadian. I get it. But <laughs> I was yeah, no. Frank. <laughs> no, like, you know, uh, uh, Frank Dukes was actually one of my Sokies. So, you know, I I, I did like uh, the, the oh, Van Damme really? movies as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I did, How was uh, he as an instructor? Huh? How was he as an instructor? Uh, he's, he was good. He was very knowledgeable. Uh, it's very, um, the style of ninja, it was, it was really tough. So, like, when when he grabbed you, he, he like, he grabbed you. You know what I mean? And he would come in. I had um, a Shidoshi that I trained with, and then he would come in every once in a while and kind of, like, do little just like little pop-ins and, and, you know, show us that thing here too. But he, he seemed to, to be pretty knowledgeable about stuff, you know? Um, I, I definitely, I like what I'm doing now though. You know, I feel like I've, I've, I've learned more with the JKD as far as like my fight game pull, you know, um, through uh, the Magda Institute. So I would say probably like now when I think about, like, who do I look up to? It would have to be, like, my Sifus at the Magda Institute. You know, like, Sifu Marco, Sifu Glenn, Sifu Cass. You know, like, I, I, want, I want to emanate them at first. You know what I mean? Like, you learn it, you mimic it, and then you, you dissolve it and make it your own. You know, and so I definitely take a lot, a lot from them. You know, so now, with, regards sure. to, with regards to, like, your teaching style? Yeah, yeah, 100%, yeah. Some of it's me. So I would say, okay, so with regards to my teaching style, some of it is my ninjutsu because um, I still try to be kind of hard, not regimented, but like hard. You know what I mean? Like um, I try not to let him like, oh, I, you know, I'm like, no, no, suck it up. Let's go. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm so tired. Like, well, you should be tired. You know, you're going to be in a fight. You're going to be really tired, you know? So, um, but, but, but then I'm not as tough on them uh, physically as far as like, punishment and you know beating on them and stuff like that i'm more lax like at the mags institute is, is very laid back in a sense like you're still doing some hardcore training but like 
you know, ninjutsu, I had to salute before I wanted to take a piss, you know? Um, yeah, I did that. Yeah, yeah. I did that to my Sifu cast when he, when the first time I met him, you know, I had to use a restroom and I was like, oh my Sifu, can I go use the, uh, can I go use yeah, the restroom? Like he, that. Yeah. He was like, oh man, you're really traditional. He's like, no, you don't do that here. I was like, All right, great. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I enjoyed just, that. I tell my students, if you're going to go to the bathroom, just tell me, don't ask me. Just tell me. So yeah. if you pass out and you're not back in a minute or two, will somebody come check on you? <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> you're not you know, you're not gonna ask you to fucking take a piss. You're a grown ass person. I hate people that right. do that shit. That's the most annoying yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. No, so I was like, you know, when I first did the ninjutsu, it was cool. I I didn't mind it at first because, like, when I was a kid, I was a little punk and I didn't do sports and I didn't do anything like that. And so, um, nin, nin, ninjutsu was probably the hardest thing I had ever done physically in my life. Like my white to yellow belt test was eight and eight in the morning until. Uh, one in the morning the next day and that was just white to yellow belt yeah That's it was crazy. it was what crazy you uh we had to clean the dojo uh white glove test and he'd check your notebook you always had to take notes he always made sure you're writing notes um he would check your notes while you're cleaning the dojo yeah and then uh we would run uh to about it was about a mile this was in north hollywood California. So we'd run about a mile to it's called uh, Valley College. It's actually where they filmed uh, the gridiron with um the rock where they're playing football and he's teaching the, the juvie kids how to play football. Okay. Um, they filmed it at that, at that college. And so we, we would run to that college and then run around the track. And then we'd have to do four rolls and back rolls from sideline to sideline. We'd have to run up and down the bleachers and then we'd run back to class and you got about a 45 minute um, change and eat. And then you did all whatever your belt level was supposed to. Like I had to stand in horse ready for half an hour. I had to, you know, and then you did like all your physical stuff, you know, kicks, punches, you know, throws, rolls, falls, you know, techniques. And but he's testing other belt levels, too. So like you do yours and then you had to wait for the other belt level to get through. Oh, there. OK. That's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's a long ass test. I hate to do the black belt test. It'd be like fucking three weeks. They camped out. That's crazy. You got to go hide. <laughs> head, like, fuck, that's crazy. See, that's that's the kind of training I want to actually go, go into. I want to start learning how to like. um I got to find something. There's got to be a group of people teaching this shit, but I, I like go out, make a shelter, hunt, gut your fucking animal, all that shit. Yeah, like I don't ever see that shit like that. Yeah. In, I, I think it's Arkansas. I could be wrong. Um, but there's a guy, I follow him on Instagram. He goes by Spencer two dogs. And, and that's what he does. Um, he has, he, I believe he teaches ninjutsu as well. And, and, and some other arts, he makes knives but he, he yeah, that guy. Post, yes, yeah. He'll take them out for survival camps and stuff like that. And then also teach them the martial arts. So that's, you know. Yeah, that, that shit's, I think that's important. I think that's a missing piece yeah. in martial arts. Yeah, no, I mean, you, we kind of need a little bit of that, you know, not, not to get into, you know, politics and stuff, but things are kind of scary. So you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> you can say, talk about politics. You can say whatever you want here, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So how would you consider like your teaching style now that you've done, done in a while as to how it started, how much has it changed and how? Mm, okay. Um, I would say I really had no clue what I was doing at first. So I was, I was kind of all over the map, you know? So I, I would try to teach them everything in one day, you know, <laughs> like, like, Okay, you need to know this, you need to know that, you need to know this, you know, because my I want them to be able to walk out of here at least being able to defend themselves a little bit, whether it's just like one great jab or one great cross, you know what I mean? Like as as a beginner, you know, but that those first couple of weeks or whatever, you know. So I'm just like trying to shut things down their throat, and so then I realized one, it wasn't working for any of us, right? Because I was giving them too much information, I couldn't remember what I was teaching them and stuff. Um, so I started journaling things down and, and um, like focusing like today. Um, I watched them actually um, something my, my guru L kind of was helping me out with when, when last time I went to Cali for a seminar, she's like, she, she had him do um, she had him do some freelance mitt work and stuff like that, or just kind of watching them while they're on the floor and, and practicing and doing their own thing. Um, and then she's like, see, you watch them and then you can see, what they might need for today or where you might want to go. So like, so today I was, you know, one thing I definitely wanted to do was, was um, 
especially with a couple of my, my new students, was I, I really want them to understand proper form in, in, in punching, you know, because they're, they're hitting the, the mat mitts, but they're not, it's not going to do them any good the way they're doing it. And no matter how much I was kind of trying to say certain things to make a click in their head, I, I couldn't find the right thing. So I was like, all right, I think the speed drill would be the best thing for them. Um, so I really wanted to do that. And that was already in my head to do. But then once once um, a couple of the students got here, um, they started going through um, some Sinawali drills. And, you know, I could the, I could tell like the new person was having a hard time with it. And I was like, that's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to do this mitt drill really quick. And then we're just going to focus on Kali for the for the rest of the night and, and literally just that Sinawali pattern, you know, which is about three different patterns that we put into one big big flow you know so we call it the, the downward figure eight right and then what we i call the the three strikes is one two three one two three and then uh cob cob you know yeah. and then and then just throw them all together so i taught them each one individually let them do it for a while you know kind of fix things like where they do the magic wand that one you know <laughs> and then and then we and then we went into there so I would say I, I'm definitely pulling on the reins a little bit more as far as like how much information I get them and, and, and how quick I give it to them and, yeah. and really trying to focus on um, giving them what they need or yeah what what they need and not what they want right that was another thing one of the see we got a sifu out I believe it's Ohio um, and uh, um, he you know he always that was one of the things he told me he's like you got to learn how to give them what they need and not what they want, you know? Yeah. I got, I got one student who'll come in, all he wants to do is collie and knife stuff the whole time. And it's like, oh, we're not doing that tonight, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a hard thing, right? Like, do you, so do you dedicate certain classes for certain things? Like, do you have, I'm going to, uh, you know, collie classes at Thursdays at six, you know, JKD is going to be on this day. Uh, boxing class will be scheduled on, like, do you have something like that? Or do you kind of just, every class is kind of like, wherever your theme is going. Yeah, I would say every class definitely has some salt and pepper in it right now. I am actually gearing it towards more um, where I was talking to them um, the last couple of weeks where I definitely want to do a little more conditioning. So I might dedicate a day where we're just doing different type of conditioning drills, you know, because I'm like, I'm teaching you guys how to fight and do violence. But the problem is, is your cardio won't be able to handle yeah. it when it's time, you know, because yeah. no one really understands until you've really gotten down real time or even sparring like a serious sparring match about that that adrenaline emotional dump and how much it like saps your strength out of you once it's done you know and that can yeah. go really quick if you don't if you're not used to it and controlling it properly you know what i mean so uh but yeah so usually there's definitely i try to do i, I definitely try to do some striking and, and kicking if, if, you know, for the first maybe half. And then I may say, okay, um, I might give him the option. I might say, do you want to do C-Lot or do you want to do um, Kali or Screma, you know, or I'll, or I'll just pick it and be like, you know, we haven't done C-Lot in a couple of weeks. Let's do C-Lot, you know, or we haven't focused on sticks. Like today, you know, I noticed that we hadn't focused on sticks a lot watching them do that drill. So I was like, okay, we're going to, we're going to focus on some, some stick drills. Cause I hadn't, you know, enough people here to kind of pair up and stuff. So uh, but I do as time goes on and hopefully like right now too, it's kind of the availability of my students. You know, some of them are only really available on the days that I teach. Um, the, like I got guys that don't come on Tuesday, but they come Thursday, Friday. So I don't want to be like Tuesday's only C lot. And then they yeah. miss out on that. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I haven't really focused like that. Like Magda does that Magda will be like, Hey, Wednesday is Kali C lot night. You know, and so when you go in there, you know you're doing that for two hours. Yeah, I think I think some people like that. I think I think having a like once in a while just mixing up your class is good too. I don't yeah. think you necessarily live by one or the other. You know what I mean? But schedule yeah. class, it's more like you're accommodating to people, right? Like if you want the people who like to have a tight schedule and know exactly what they're gonna do and they you know they or they just wanna do that one thing, the schedule mm -hmm. class is perfect for that. When you have like a mixed class. I think that's where the more free thinkers gather. You know, that's a class you can really have fun. And, yeah. Uh, so you reserve it for that kind of crowd, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that, that's kind of how these these guys are. You know, no one wants to learn just one thing. A lot of my guys, like one of the guys, he runs security at his church. 
Um, and, you know, he's a shooter. And so he was like, look, I, I know, I understand that just because I have a gun doesn't mean that I'm unstoppable. I might have to fight to get to my gun. I have no clue how to detain someone on the floor if they do come and mess with the school, you know what I mean? So he wants to focus on all different kinds of things, you know, striking and, and kicking and weapon disarm and, you know, different if, uh, things like that. If he, if he likes that kind of shit, uh, I don't know if he watches him already, but tell him to follow a guy named Todd Fossey. Oh, I follow Todd. Yeah, yeah Todd's he, great for that shit. I'm actually, actually looking to have him come here uh, next this summer. I'm looking to host him. Nice. Yeah, Combat Arts. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah, actually, I think I found him through you guys. Like, I found you through uh, Apollo. That's his, is that his name. I call him GN because that's what I see on uh, on Instagram yeah, all the time. It's his, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's got, he's got large audience, you know. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, and that's that's your, your whole your whole group. Like, um, when I was watching, the way it seems like all you guys kind of think, you know, um, outside the box. You know, as it, as it should be a JKD mindset, right? You know, um, even though he's not JKD, he seems to have kind of a JKD mindset in a sense, you know? Um, but but that, you guys, like, I was like, ah, I'm following these guys because that's exactly how I think. You know what I mean? Like, it shouldn't be so – it has no. to be like this, you know? I think that was a great thing about it is, like, everybody had um, – everybody definitely had, like, a skill set. Everybody had brought something that was pretty cool. But mm -hmm. the thing that made it really uh, spark was like how each one of us, like we already spent like a life doing yeah, it, right? Yeah. So we know we know that this, like, we know we're all here because we love this shit. Yeah, and you guys know what the hell you're talking about, you know? Yeah, and like, and and like, <laughs> we weren't, we weren't like, I didn't feel, at least at the beginning, anyway, I didn't feel like anybody there was trying to like up the other one. Nice. In fact, like the first time uh, Paulo told me, he's like, hey, come by. I want you to meet Steve. Steve, mm -hmm. Denal, uh, he's a great guy. Great guy. And a uh, talented guy. He, ha he has a great he has a great way of teaching pads. It's very unique. And it's not like I haven't seen people do what he does before, but it is in the manner that he does it. So what made him unique when I worked with him is his regulation of speed. Okay. So, like, so like he would get, he would get you – he just and he's very soft spoken, so it'll calm you. Yeah. It'll calm you. It'll make you listen. Uh -huh. Speaking low, right? And, and it, it, right there, his vibe, his energy just makes you like focus. And then he'll just be like, pop, 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 pop. And then he'll start hitting you with the pad. You got to cover, and then he'll hold it for you to hit. And then he'll just go back to pop, pop. So his his way of like doing, and, and that would happen with blade in hand, uh, stick in hand, everything. Mm. A very good way of like ramping it up and what i found that i took away from him and i try to emulate it sometimes I, again i try to find my way of doing it my interpretation right. of it, it i attribute that trick or or way of doing things to steve because what i found it does is it keeps you on your toes yes because you know it's coming yes. but you don't know when and how all right yeah well, so now you have a fight right we got to have your hands. Exactly. So it trains you in that state. But see, the thing that's cool about Steve is he's not making you sweat yet. Mm. He's getting you to have this adrenaline dump and all this exercise in your mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're so focused and you want to see. Yeah, you're, like, yeah. you're trying not to think. You're regulating your breath. You're waiting. You're trying not to over twitch. Yeah. And you're not even breaking a sweat. Yeah. So it's cool because he'll get you there and then he can make you sweat too, right? So I, I that's that's the kind of shit that we were doing and it just like we all had that we all had something it was it was really really good times a lot of good training there and like uh it was really a training of minds like i think my fight iq grew mm. while i was there you know mm. i think i had one going in i think i contributed a lot to what we were talking about or doing yeah but definitely, definitely i fucking was satisfied with what i learned it was a very good exchange all right yeah yeah nice yeah, I always, I, you guys always seem like you had some really creative, fun things going on, but like real shit, you know what I mean? Like, even though, you know, it might be playing, but there was still this underlying, like, okay, but this is real material, like, like how you're just talking about with the, with the pads, right? Because that's, you know, I, I bounced for 16 years and, and that's exactly what it is, is right? Is you're just sitting there, you're waiting, you're like, this dude's going to hit me. You know, because being a bouncer, you know, my, my, the guy I worked for, like, we weren't, we weren't really allowed to, 
pop off first. You know what I mean? You want the law on your side. I'd always tell our guys, you know, like, you know, yeah. So, you know, but you're just sitting there waiting and you're looking for those signs and you're just like, okay, when's this happening? You know, (laughs) like, or when we got in the big parking lot brawls, you know, and it was like 12 on 12 and then us, you know, like you're just, it's chaos, but it was a lot of fun. (laughs) How do you think, how do you think as an instructor, we can kind of, I try to do this sometimes, but how do you think as an instructor, what unique ways have you found that you're using right now to kind of create that while, while training with, or if your students maybe aren't even there at that level, but they're, you know, even with your training partners, what do you guys do to kind of emulate that kind of uh, dynamic in your training? Hmm. Yeah, I would say probably my, my guys aren't there yet. Like, I'll, I'll, I will do like the, you know, when we're holding pads and stuff, like I'll have them hit and then I will just kind of like swing at them, you know, and just be like, cover, 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 you know, like things like that. Um, I do try to, what we used to do, um, and I, and I have been starting it with the guys, especially now that I, I was, uh, able to, uh, get some mats. Um, uh, you ever done, have you ever heard of Randori? Yeah. Like in, okay. Really. So, uh, yeah, well, in, in ninjutsu, it was, uh, you know, we, you'd stand in the middle and then everybody would be around you and you'd close your eyes and then they would count, you know, the Shidoshi, uh, would, would count numbers. And then you'd open your eyes, salute to everybody, and then he'd just start saying numbers out. And you'd be like, one. And then, like, the guy could be behind you. And then, boom, yeah. And then while I'm fighting him, he's going, two, you know, and I've got to take care of this guy while this guy's coming, you know. And then he would also make it so um, we had certain techniques for certain height people, you know, because which I actually agree with. You know, yeah. there's certain things that it's not going to work on a tall person that'll work better on a short person, vice versa. And so as that person's coming in and I'm dealing with this guy and I'm, I have to assess this guy and be like, oh, is he taller than me? You know, like, well, OK, I got to use this, you know. Um, but at the same time, I like the fact now that I don't have to think like I have to use this. I just know that the principles of, OK, he's taller. So I'm like, I don't want to punch up. You know, like there's going to be no power punching up. So let's go low, bring his face to me kind of thing. But that's how in ninjutsu, that's how we would kind of get that stress level up or that adrenaline up, you know, Um, because the other thing is, too, is we had things called uh, breakup moves. So like we'd wear everybody always had to wear groin cups all the time because we did a lot of groin strikes or we would do um, mock finger jabs to the eyes. You know, and if I missed something and I didn't get that breakup move, well, then you get to try to take me to the floor and grapple me. And then while I'm on the floor trying to scramble to get back up, here comes number two or number three, and I've got to assess how I'm doing that, you know? And so that's what I'm, I want to do with the guys here because I really felt that that um, really ingrained the technique into me, you know, because yeah. it, was, it was as live as we could get it. You know, like I remember one night we did that um, in ninjutsu, we did some randori and then I went and I bounced that night and man, like I, and when I actually had to get into something and it was the cleanest. It was the only time where I could say that move went exactly like in class, you know what I mean? Like as if he was just like letting me do it to him. But I, I feel that it was because I was already kind of what I would say, like hardwired in real quick to that, to that portion of my brain, you know, so I was already ready, ready to go when I, when I walked into, you know, work. So, um, I learned, what I, really, to do with them. I learned a really cool drill, uh, drill from my instructor, uh, Joey at Com- uh, Combat Arts. And we were doing it for like self-defense and things. So the person would just like stand and they would be relaxed with their eyes closed. And then when this person would say open, they would attack with one of the three techniques we worked for that class. Oh, okay. So like if I he said open and he was throwing a haymaker, I would do whatever I needed to do, right? Right. Uh, if he say open and he was pointing a like a a gun we would try to go for that right away mm-hmm. if you said oh, open it'd be a knife i'd have to and it was cool because like you really learn quick like if you start anticipating you're gonna fuck it up all day yep yep so it's just, just it, gotta... i found it was good for like reactionary with my yes. eyesight yeah, you know? yeah and uh well then we did other drills like um i do other drills with uh my friends where we'll be grappling right and um I'll have a knee. Sh- I'll have a knee pad on or a, a belly pad, mm-hmm. and we'll be grappling. And we put the timer. And while we're grappling, he's looking to control just my hands and throw knees to my body. And then okay. when the bu- when the buzzer goes, I I draw. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're yeah. fighting, we're fighting. He's working his knees. I'm giving him energy. I'm trying not to. I'm fighting for position. He's fighting. As soon as it draws, I'm going for my gun. He, or sorry, uh, knife. And he can go to stop right. me right away. Or now if it's out, we're fighting with that. And we keep going. Yeah. And he starts to work yeah. the knees and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, the, that's good. Getting that situational awareness. Yeah, because we go from, so that's like tactile. So like I use those kinds of things for like, if I'm working like reactionary drills, like even from Muay Thai, right? Say I, mm -hmm. uh, let's look at a, a left hook uh, and a round kick. Right, right. And I would say, you know, have them in their stance. Close your eyes, open. Throw one of those two. If the, if the hook comes, cover. Hook, cross knee. If they kick comes, shield. Cross hook, right kick. Whatever right. it is, working in the class. But just add that element to it because now they they have to stand there and just like, I got a second to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like that. I like that. Yeah. It's like we'll little things. Like that. Yeah, we'll do like um at Magda and I've done it a couple times with them because we have in C lot we have like uh, what we call like the you know these seven openers you know that you can do, and but they they're great because you can use them in street self defense too. Like I don't have to be in my C lot stance and stuff like that. You know, it's like you know parrying and and you know um. Just all, all different, you know, stuff that almost looks like uh, pox sound stuff. And so I'll have them, you know, just stand in the middle of the floor, you know, and sometimes like they'll kind of like get ready. I'm like, no, no, you can't be ready. I, like pretend like you're tying your shoe or pretend like you're taking your wallet out of your pocket or you're standing in line and I'm just some dude who's going to roll up on you, but you don't know when I'm going to punch you. And I'll just kind of like pace around them. And then like, I'll come at them like, you know, like, oh, you know, and then have them, you know, do the move real quick. I'll have the, 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 the mitts on, I'll be like, boom, and I'll go to, to punch them, and then they've got to do whatever opener, you know, that they they feel they can do, but they can only do those C-lot openers, you know? Um, and then one of the things as far as, like, being able to uh, – that we did in, in ninjutsu that I liked, that I felt gave me uh, good observation skills is, like, you'd have to – you'd have two guys standing next to the – you'd be doing falls and rolls, right? And so you'd have two guys standing next to the mat, and they're going to hold out different color ribbons or belts, you know? And so while I'm falling and rolling, they just go like this real quick. And I have to pay attention. You know, I have to be like, okay, I need to use the mirror to see this guy while I'm also looking at this guy. So it was kind of teaching me to kind of be really observant, which I felt kind of helped me when I was working, you know, like being able just to kind of scan the room and see a bunch of different things like that. But yeah, I, like, I, like, I like what you're talking about. I really, that, that sounds like something... Well, yeah, and we're, doing it, we're doing it for like like the way we we're working it. We're doing it for like uh, I, I shouldn't say too much of it actually, but like <laughs> no, because uh, we like this is where like we've all agreed no videos, mm -hmm. no like we're just gonna fucking make a formula. Here's our here's here's our objective. Here's what we're working right. on, and we're drilling the fuck out of it. And every time we find success, we document it. We look at how do we drill it, how do we break it down, what muscles or. Uh, you know, attributes uh, to this. What are the exercises yeah. that have those muscles? Like, we are trying to fucking... You guys are in a think tank, man. I'm jealous. Nah, man. <laughs> and it's great. But yeah, so we, we'll just break it down to the simplest drills. And I think I think sometimes that's the thing that, like, like you were saying, you're trying to give everything off in one night because you're so excited to get there with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they can't, they can't keep up. No. So we can't be afraid to be boring. Yeah, yeah, right? You can't be afraid what, to be boring, bro. Because what's boring to us isn't boring. There's been a bunch of times where, like, in my head, I was like, man, that class was boring. And they're like, man, thank you, Seafood. That was a great class. I got it. I'm like, oh, well, I'm really happy you enjoyed it. You know, like, okay, good. You know, like, like you know yeah, I, exactly you're right. You know what I started doing that I actually, like, uh, found that there was, um, what do you call it, interest? And I'm like, okay, if you guys like this, I'm going to do this now. So what I've told my students, and I'm going to do it at the end of the, every month, at the end of every month, on my Friday class, this is my incentive to join my Friday class. Fridays are Friday, right? Saturday, Saturday people will come, but like Friday night, a lot of people get home from work. It's the it's the end of the week. They might go out or they just want to chill, right? Friday right, seems right, to right. be like the or they go away on the weekend. Friday seems to be the, the quieter class, right, but it's the right. consistent ones that are always there. So I always show them. I always have the most fun with them. It's like this is my thank you for coming, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sure. so. It's like, okay, so so every month at the end of the month, what I do now is whoever's there on Friday, it's kind of it's going to be like, here's today's class, go work on it, but then I'm going to spot check everybody. Mm. So I'm going to grab one person while they work. Okay, come over here. And all right, uh, 
I want you to do this combination on the bag. Boom, boom, boom. The first thing that I see is wrong. That's it. We're working that. All right. All right. Like, so, so this lady was having a hard time uh, throwing her cross and into her hook. All right. So literally all I did was like, okay, hey, put your, put your glove, put your right hand on the bag. All right. And then I had the other hand up and I get in her stance and I'm pushing her, checking her. All right. You strong. You feel good. Your chin is down. Mm -hmm. Good. Ready? All right. From here, you're going to throw the hook real hard. Ready? And then you're going to freeze. Ready? Go. Wow. And then I would correct. Okay, ready? Stay there. Yeah, yeah, throw the yeah. cross. Throw the cross. Wow. I would correct. And then that's it. And then now I found just doing that slow shit, stopping at the every point. Like, not everybody always does this, but I can't show you that. Stop. Boom. Right. You see where they get fucking lazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And then they're like, yeah. they have that moment. Like, oh, shit, you're right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I can see it. Yeah. But now, but at least they know what it feels like now. Like another girl, she was uh, standing with her stance too narrow. Or her, yeah, her stance was too narrow. So she's like, every time she throws a cross, she would be feeling like she's on a fucking tightrope. Yeah. So I'm like, you have no power. You see how you're losing balance? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, because your, your feet's too narrow. All right. All right. So you can't hold, you can't even hold your, your glove on the bag when you throw the cross because you're trying to fall over. So I go, when you feel that happen, take one step further away from your lead foot that's what you're talking to yeah 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 right now throw it wow now they feel it fuck it they're off to the races yeah yeah that's what i've been trying to tell i, I I'll, I'll that's what i've been telling them a lot that lately i'm like fix your stance and they'll move both feet and i'm like okay look so when i tell you to fix your stance or you're too narrow you know don't worry about moving your, your lead leg. That's like your post. You're going to be pivoting on that and moving on. It just stays there. You know, that's, you know, you move the rear one until you find that, that's that center, you know? And so now they're kind of like, Oh, okay. Or I'll tell them, I go, Hey, if I say, you know, your hips are turned, don't worry about trying to move both feet to return your hips straight to me. That means that your rear foot is pointed that direction and not, straight at yeah. me so just turn your foot and all of a sudden your hips will turn with you you know i'm like this is all body mechanics you know and so once you start learning that then but you won't feel that unless you slow down yes yes and that's what right, i try to come to they're looking at the finish and i and i find that it's the finished picture so yeah. it's like so like i said with that lady right i said uh what was the combination she said jab cross hook right kick right so let's say she was fucking up her cross and her hook and that's why i stopped there Right. Once they had that, then I was like, okay, throw the kick. And I just went through the same process. She started from the hook. Okay, take the kick. She just tried to swing the kick. It was too dense. I'm like, hey, you're not pivoting. Now you got to step. Yeah. And for me, it was like, I was like, I hope this fucking lady doesn't think I'm nitpicking her. Being <laughs> yeah. Overly fucking corrective and all this shit in my head. This is what I'm being paranoid. I'm like, I'm trying to. Yeah, but, but we're marking like Michelangelo's, man. That's what we're trying to do, right? Is we're she loved it, right? And I didn't try yeah. to correct things. It was just like the one thing. So right. I think I'm gonna do that because I, I had good, um, I had a good response to that. So with regards to your teaching and your training, like for me, I don't know if you do this too, but I always like to like focus on something. Like this year or, or this quarter or for six months, I'm really gonna put my effort into fixing this. Mm -hmm. You know. So, uh, do you, what is your focus right now with regards to you as a student of the arts and what is the main driving thing you want to focus on with regards to teaching in the martial arts for the new year? Like, so when I so, so like, so you're self teaching, you're at your right. self teaching and for your students. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, like for my, I honestly, for, I, I would say it's probably the same for both. I want to work on, on cardio. I, I, I feel I have lost a lot of cardio. Um, you know, I live, I came from sea level to 5,000 elevation. I've been here for three or four or three years now, and I'm still having a hard time with cardio. Like when I go train at the MMA spot, uh, average Joe's out here in Prescott, like, you know, I'm, I'm sparring with these young bucks and they're just going, 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 you know? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, well, I, what are the young I, bucks? <laughs> yeah. so i want you know I, I i for me personally i know it doesn't i want to work on for sure my cardio 
a hundred percent. And then I would honestly, as I want to get more into um, diving a little bit deeper into the catch wrestling with, uh, with my coach, uh, John Potenza out here. Yeah, it's great shit. I love catch yeah, wrestling. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm, I, I really dig it. I know I need it. You know, um, yeah, I know enough stuff where the, the guy has no clue. I'm going to be okay. But if it's someone like you, you know, like who's got good ground game and been training jujitsu or catch wrestling for a long ass time, I'm going to get tied up in a second, you know, and I already know it, you know. Um, so I definitely want to dive more into the, in the catch wrestling for myself and I want to work on my cardio and I want to work on the cardio for my students. I want to get them into better shape. So that way, heaven forbid they ever have to use it, they're going to be in a decent amount of shape to where they not feel gassed out. You know, I just feel it's important. I think you're on the money, man. I think that's the most um, underrated thing. Like even in self-defense, think about it. In self-defense, right, you want to fight, you want to get away from your attacker. Yes. Right? So yeah. not only do you have to have – you know, the physicality to deal with someone trying to hit you and wrestling with them. And mm -hmm. but now let's say you fucking run away from this person and they catch you. Yeah. Are you now still going to have enough energy to deal with that? Exactly. Cause that's what a cop has to deal with. Right. But not just a cop, a regular person trying to get the fuck away. Yeah. First, from, your first from three or four yeah. dudes or something. Yeah. Your first thing should be like, can I even fucking run? Yeah. Or am I going to fucking cough a lung by the end I get to the corner? Exactly. And you know what I mean? Done. I, I think that's a hundred percent. And you know what? Like I've been doing that too, but I, I tell you what, I fucking hate it. I me too. <laughs> I cannot stand it. I cannot stand it. Honestly, you know what I really do for exercise? Ride my bike. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. I take my dogs. I ha I harness them up. I got two huskies. I, I harness yes, them up to my I bike. Know, they're beautiful. They'll yeah. pull me. I'll go fucking, I can go to Toronto in a day. No problem. And back. <laughs> Well, but you know, I'm not an asshole when I get on hills and shit, or I, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll you're doing your work. right? But man, I I love it. I put on my music, like, I have to be doing something like that. I love training outdoors, yeah, I'd love yeah. to do more of it this summer, honestly. I think yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna go to like trails and stuff like that, and then maybe let the dogs loose. I'm like, like last year, there was a beach, and I, and I found a nice huge rock, and I was just letting the dogs run. And all I did was just pick up the rock, throw it over my head. Turn around, run to it, pick it up. Oh, nice. Yeah. I did sideways. And it passed the time. It was beautiful. The water's there. Training yeah. outside, I think it's so much different. I think, I think uh like training outside. Elements, man. Yeah, you need to have it. And that's the thing. Yeah, you need an element, you need different, like you gotta train, like, like I think I'm gonna start doing this with my JKD students. Like, hey guys, class today uh is at the underground parking lot at this place. Right. Right. Hey guys. Today is uh, over here. Yeah, change it up. Yeah, because that, yeah. that's right. They're not going to be fighting in a school environment. Right? right? I think that needs to be done more. Asphalt. Yeah, yeah. I think it needs to be right. done more. I'm actually looking at buying a, a shit box so I can train in the car. <laughs> Just park it on my driveway and do lessons on my fucking driveway with, in the car. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, you know, doing stuff like that. Like, you know, um, I have some friends too, like really good people. And, you know, this is why I want to bring Todd Fossey down. But we do drills, too. Like, you know, we'll close the doors after, after you know, the day is done. And we, we shut off the lights and one person will hide and the other person's got a low light look for them. Oh, nice. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, Magda, sure. Magda would, uh, would roll ball, balls out, like medicine balls and benches and stuff like that. And then go <laughs> flick the lights on and off while you're doing oh, sticks. Yeah. You Give know. you a seizure. <laughs> yeah. I, one thing I hated working at the clubs with the freaking strobe lights, man. Trying to watch the dance floor. You're like, oh, God, I can't see anything. <laughs> so I, I think I veered you off. But did you did you have that what you're looking for to do? It's just that's the cardio. Other than that, what about like um, like uh, are you having any of them going to test? Are you having them any of them like uh, competing or any of them doing anything like that? No, um, no, I don't do I don't do any type of competitions. Um, oh, you know what I would like to do though, actually, is and um, um, my my coach over at Average Joe said that he'd be ha more than happy to allow us to go over there on um, Thursday. He has like an uh, an open sparring mat. Oh, dude, you know? you're smart. That's how you do it. Yeah, yeah. that's how you do it, man. You yeah, know, I would love I find, for them to start sparring. 
so many people, so many people, and they don't have to be that experienced. Yeah, that's you know? how they get the experience. I, I wrestle with my buddies, but I know how to wrestle with my kids. Yeah, it's still wrestling. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Just right. get their fucking feet wet. Make it be a thing of just like, let me learn. Yeah, exactly. And as they get know? better, pick it up. Yeah, maybe like once a month or something, just just roll over there. You know, let them spar, let them kind of figure out some stuff that they know that they're doing wrong, like. I have um, a, a phase one student, one of my senior students, and it was just me and him one night. And I was like, okay, you know, I need, I wanted to work on some drills for myself, um, you know, for, for Magda and stuff. And, uh, and so I was like, all right, we're going to, we're going to spar. So I warmed him up and we did some mitt stuff. And then like we did, uh, you know, the catch drill, I jab, you jab, and I'm going to throw the cross. Now you try to, to parry or slip, or I gave him a certain thing that he had to, to work on, you know, we went back and forth like that, got him warmed up. And then I said, okay, we're going to do tool sparring now. So you get to pick, you want, do you want to punch with your lead hand or your rear hand? And he's like, oh, I'll take my lead hand. I'm like, okay, you can only hit me with your lead hand. You can block with your lead hand. You can block with your rear hand. You can set things up with your rear hand, yeah, but you can't make contact. Bro. Yeah, exactly. You know, They're great. Uh, and so we, we did that. And then uh, we did that for a couple of times. And then, and then I said, all right, now we're just going to kind of, we're just going to open spar. We're just going to, no kicks, anything like that, you know, and, and I didn't light him up or anything like that. I worked towards his ability and I just kind of worked on some stuff. I was like, okay, when I want to, when he punches, I want to slip, you know, so I'm purposely just working on this, you know, because I know he can only punch me with his lead hand, you know, when we were doing the tool sparring and just, you know, and then he started like seeing things that I kept telling him he was doing when he was hitting just the mitts, you know, and that person's just standing there. You know, and, you know, now all of a sudden he realizes, you know, oh man, when the punch comes, I turn my face like this, you know, and, or like, you know, my, my hands were down the whole time and I'm, you know, now I know why my hand needs to be up or my chin needs to be down when I punch, you know, because I would capitalize on certain things just so he could kind of, kind of see it, you know? Um, And then, so after doing that with him, I was like, okay, you know, we definitely, and I mean, Bruce Lee even said the way to JKD is is through sparring. Right. So, um, yeah. 100%. I feel I feel that'd be really good for them to do do it once a month and then really kind of um, think about it, you know, like so maybe, you know, it's a Thursday night. So maybe Thursday night they spar. We don't talk about it until Friday, you know, or maybe even Tuesday next week to really give them time to analyze it and chew on it, you know, and really kind of make them think about it and then come back to me and be like, be like, OK, what do you think you needed to do more, you know? And not just the obvious hours are like, oh, not get hit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, you know, I noticed that um, my hands were down. Like, because I noticed like when I'm sparring over there, um, I call it coming up for air. So I'll be like, I'll be like this and I'll be all hunkered down for a second. Then all of a sudden I'll go, you know, and then beep, beep, and I get punched in the face because the guy's just waiting for that moment, you know? So I'm like, oh, I got to work on that, you know? Like, so. That's I, how you learn. Yeah, I think, I think it'd be really good for them, man. So. <laughs> I'll share something with you if you're interested. That yes. I do with, do with my guys. Oh, so man, you've you've, you've I, helped me out a bunch of times. So. I find this shit. I find this shit so funny, and it's like, it's funny. They're learning, but they're getting mad. They think like I'm choosing sides sometimes. It's fucking hilarious. So I'll I'll have them spar right, and uh, I'll have them come up, and I'll be like, okay, come here, and I'll whisper in his ear, I want you to do this. So whether it's like, uh, fake the jab and throw the cross to the body, or fake the jab and then right kick, or whatever it is, right. And then I'll right. tell the other person. Then I'll tell the other person. All right, he's gonna fake the jab and he's gonna right kick you. <laughs> it's funny for me, but here, look, no, I'm setting him up to fail. Yeah. For me, yeah. that's like um, in jujitsu, starting from your back. Because what happens when you want to do something to somebody? Your move it ain't fucking working. Yeah, exactly. And you keep trying to fish it and make it happen, right? Like yeah, so he's like, "Fuck!" So now he's like, <laughs> so now he's like doubting himself, or he's doubting if I fucking told him what he's gonna do, right? Because right? yeah. he knows I would do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. but all of a sudden, the fun thing is, is like now they're now they're like problem solving. Now he right. right away within the first by the third time, it doesn't work. He starts automatically faking, and that's the habit I want. Mm-hmm. When somebody has your rhythm. Or somebody can block everything you're throwing. That means two things. They have your timing or your right. telegraphing. Yes. So yes. fucking change it. Yep. 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 Yeah. So I just set them up to fail and like have fun, have at it. 
Yeah, yeah. And the other yeah, guy I loves love it because he knows it. He knows he's yeah. gonna do it. Yeah. You know, so it's funny. And then I and then I reverse the and then I reverse the rules, right? I'll right. give him something else. So I find it, it's like a fun shit to do, and uh, but it's like it gets them problem solving. Yeah, yeah. You know That's I mean? how you or gotta do it, right? Yeah, or sometimes I'll tell them to do something like, um, you know, like do this technique and I don't spoil it now. I just tell this person to do a different technique. And then it's kind of interesting. Who can land it? Who can right. pick it off? Yeah. Who, ha who has an understanding more of how to set things up? It yeah. lets me yeah. learn their fight IQ. So then yeah, I know yeah. how to approach them when I, I teach you. them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's funny yeah. like that. And I, honestly, I think that kind of stuff that I've been doing is what's actually helping the culture. Because now they're having fun with each other. Yeah. And that's the thing. If you don't have fun. Yeah, you're going to get bored. You're going to leave. You're not going to learn. You know, you're not going to take the time to practice and, and, yeah. and, and get better. You know? So, yeah. Think about no, how I, sore I, you get. Think about how yeah. sore you get from hitting. Yeah. It's got to be fucking worth it. What am I doing this for? Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It's no fun if you can't open it up. <laughs> All right, I got a fun question for you here, man. Okay. If you can go back in time right now and walk into a class where your former self, when you first started martial arts, joined the class, how would you teach him? How would you find how, it? Be how, how would I teach me? But yeah, how would you teach? Yeah, you, who you are now as an instructor, what, what you know, Right. your right. former self, your younger self walks in the room. You travel, you're time travel. You go back in time. You're going to teach a class and you're in it. Right, right. How are you going to approach yourself? What are you going to tell yourself? What advice are you going to give? Um, all right. One, to definitely uh, to, to stick with it. Because there were a few arts that I just was like, I can't do this. And I, and I just left. Like uh, Shotokan. But I would definitely tell myself, like, dude, like, you know, it's supposed to be frustrating. And it's supposed to be hard. And you're not going to get it right away. And you're going to look clumsy and freaking stupid, you know, but that's the whole part of the, the humbling and the humility of martial arts. Right. And, and, and to like freaking just keep, keep swimming, man. Don't, don't be a bitch. Don't be a bitch. You know, there were a few times where I, I definitely feel like I, I, I bitched out on some stuff, you know, um, where like I, I, if, if I had, kept going in that direction i might have been at a whole different level than where i'm at now you know so yeah i, I would say something like that because I'm, I'm kind of hard on myself mentally anyways you know there's a lot of talking in the mirror you know what i'm saying <laughs> like, hey i so, think we all do that shit man yeah so i think i think it definitely it would it would be like that like, almost like a a big brother kind of mentality like dude stop you know suck it up keep it up you know and just and keep swimming, man. Fuck. And as far as teaching style, how would you approach your former self? What do you think you would have listened to or responded to best? When I was a child, when I was younger. Yeah, when I was younger. Probably, what? What probably, were you? Probably what how I am now. I, I I probably would have exactly how I am now. To be honest with you, because um I oh. always had I had a problem with authority. You know uh, what I mean? Like okay, so for instance, here I was studying Shotokan uh, in Orange County. Uh, and um, there was this little rec center and this black belt came in from Japan, right? And he was the black belt's teacher that was teaching me, right? And so he had broke us all off in the groups and I was with this one brown belt and I was a Klaus clown and I always wanted to be funny and silly because that was my thing. You know, I like to make people laugh, right? Yeah. 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 And so I'm giving this brown belt a hard time because he was a little bit nerdy, bro. You know what I mean? And so, like, I'm kind of busting his chops, you know? And I'm, so I'm like 14, 15, maybe, you know? And I'm just giving him shit, you know? And so that that uh, that black belt um, Japanese dude takes me out. And he's like, you come with me. I was like, all right. So we go. He opens up the rec doors. We go out into the little, the little lobby area. And literally, he waited for the doors to shut. And as soon as the doors shut, nobody was in that lobby. He grabbed me, tied me up, slammed me up against the wall and was like, you do not disrespect the black, the brown belts. You show them respect, you know? And, and the me now would have been like, you're right. I'm sorry. You know, but the me then the little shit, I was like, fuck this. 
and I and I never went back. You know, but yeah. had I gone had I gone back, who knows? You know. Yeah. So I think I think I would I would approach it just just the way I am now, where I'd just be like, look, you know, stop. You know, like you know, like just like you're being an ass, but stop. I get why you're being an ass. You know, like, like a person. Yeah, you know, like just 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 quit it, man. You know, like you got talent and you can go places if you really focus and apply yourself right now. And we can go a lot further if you would just stop being a little ass, you know? <laughs> so I would, it would be something like that. The first instructor I ever met that actually talked like that to, to like me, like treated me just like a person. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm still with him to this day because I came from a traditional background and part of it I like, some of it I like, but that, yeah, when I see somebody just talk to me like straight up, tell me yeah. straight up the truth. Like if I'm getting fat, he's gonna tell me you're getting fat, man. What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> he's a real fucking person. Yeah. You think that's so much more. That. Yeah, and you know what the other thing that they do is they don't pretend like they're the fucking best. They don't right. pretend like they have their you know tenth den and their dragon belt. You know what I mean? Like they're yeah. just fucking they're just fucking people. And he'll tell yeah. you, like, and they'll say, like, hey, can you show me this? Actually, yeah, I can, but this person's actually better at it. you should you should check them out. Yeah, like yeah. that's a rare fucking person. And that really opened my eyes to like, oh shit, you don't have to know everything. And it's okay to not always be good. And it's okay for your students to be able to fucking be better than you. Yeah, oh. exactly. Yeah. That's the other thing. Like when I, I remember when I first started teaching, I was like, oh, I gotta be better than my my students, otherwise I can't I, I shouldn't be teaching them. Like that's not fucking true. No, you're right. And I and I've actually I've told my students that too. Yeah. It's what's in here. Like, yeah. can you what are if you're articulating something? Are they able to perform it? That's it. Yeah. And if they like, perform it better than me, I'm going to be super proud. Exactly. Like what? You, you tell know? me Cousin was fucking better boxer than Mike Tyson? Right. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? No. Yeah. No, but, but his he, mind, he knew how to. His, his, mind, his mind was. Yes. His mind was. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. And that's why some people are teachers for a reason. Mm -hmm. They can be good at the art, still good at the art, but like they're not going to be the best. They might not be the yeah. best, but that doesn't mean they can't fucking teach you that. Right. You yeah. know? I think people forget about that, too. Like, there's so many aspects to martial arts, man. Mind, body, spirit. Those are the main three. But, like, yep. you're not going to excel at every fucking thing. And it's just like in life. The world doesn't revolve around you, but you have a role to play in it. Play your role and play it well. All right. Yeah, everybody wants to be kings. No one, no one wants to be who they're supposed to be, right? And not everybody is supposed to be a king, you know. Dude, I, I'll tell you something right now. I've, I have so many people better around me. Right. <laughs> so well, many no, people, better but, it, me. but it, it keeps you sharp, right? Because man, I fucking learn. That's why yeah. you have to. Yeah. I don't know. Fuck. Listen, I love to. Sh I love to teach, and. I know what works for me. I know my shit. Whatever I do, right. I know I do it. I can do it. That's it. <laughs> that's, yeah, is that you? Yeah. Exactly. Right. That's I it. Can't do jumping spin kicks or any of the tricky shit. I don't know. I any do of that. This you. white boy cannot jump. You know. Right? So it's like... <laughs> and that's okay. And but yeah. you know what? There's people out there, man. They that they fucking they create they create an image for themselves man and i seen this shit and i just like it's cool it's fun but it's like you know what man it, i i don't like you know how okay you know how when you're with your family and um you know you always start going on your phone mm. and your family's like hey what the fuck asshole yeah right, right right yeah my wife will check me funny. yeah you know what i mean <laughs> yeah you know what I mean, asshole do that when you <laughs> take a shit yeah yeah, you, know what I mean? really, you gotta you on. gotta have a uh a check on that and yeah, you need people yeah. who actually love you to say hey don't do that yeah right yeah, well here's yeah, the thing yeah. when you start training martial arts and every time you start getting into that groove and you know what i'm talking about when you're really getting into the training and you're mm -hmm. feeling shit coming out mm -hmm. and then you stop that shit to film it you're doing yourself a disservice yes yes because For now sure. it's not about fucking the experience and the feeling of it and the honing in on it. It becomes about, I got to put this on Instagram. Right. And I felt like I was starting to do that too much. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Because it's like a right. habit. And it's like, no, no, 
Yeah, and you're only like 10 minutes into your workout, really, right? And then all of a sudden you're like... Yeah, and everything cool. has to be fucking recorded, man. Right. You know, it's, it's cool that, like, if I, if I get really high and I start working out, that's what I do. I get really high, I get creative, I put music on, right. and I fuck yeah. around. Mm-hmm. All right? If I stumble onto something and it's cool, I try writing it down. When, I, when I'm sober the next day, I don't know what the fuck I wrote. It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> oh, I can't do it like that. I'm just being honest. You know, I, I'll, I'll film it. But I don't stop to film it. I'll right. just turn my phone on and literally record for the fucking however many hours it is. Yeah, and then just kind of look at it and go through it. Yeah. The next day or the week after or when I have time, I just kind of like fast, fast forward until I start doing shit. And then I stop and watch it. What did I do there? Oh, I like that combination. Let me fucking write this down. Now I'll drill right. it. Right. Right. You know, like I'll do shit yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Because I don't want to disrupt the moment. Yeah, no, that's true. Want- posted but it's still important to have utilize what you have and we have technology yeah you know you don't have your teacher at your house when you're working at your bag but if you watch back you're like oh i'm a motherfucker i dropped that hand there shit exactly yep i see that all when if i record myself on stuff i'll do that too i'm like fuck yeah so it's like you can learn from that shit right i mean if we watch if we watch youtube to learn why don't we just watch actually the actual case study (laughs) that's the way i look at it For sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, uh, What was the next question here? Uh, What do you... uh, What art... If you... if uh, What art that you've never tried that if you can go back in time and actually go dabble and go play with it, what art would that be? That I've never tried. You've never tried, but it always interests you. Like, man, if I could do an art, it would be this art. Right. Shit. I'm kind of already in it to be honest i mean sea lot i love sea lot there you go yeah i love i love uh and i didn't really know of sea lot until i got into uh the the magda institute and and uh and jkd and stuff and it was just for the way that the way that it is was exactly how i'd be fighting in the club or going up to someone and talking to someone you know so i would say yeah i mean if i could if I could go back and, and just like at that 17 year old guy who started working, you know, and, uh, got out of high school and, and started working construction and was making money. And instead of going and, and paying for, um, I think it was cook Sulwan, you know, doing, doing that. And I could go find a, tell myself, no, go find a sea lot school. And I would, I would totally be in sea lot. I, I, I dig it. I love you it. Like it. So yeah. you find, you find is that flavor, that methodology, you identify with that, you grab it, that would be like your main style that you'd want to emulate? Yes. Yeah, I would say so. I who's your, say so. Who's your like, favorite pe- people to watch in that genre? Um, I, it, Honestly, it would have to be my Sifu. Yeah? 100%. Yeah, yeah. I um, I just, I, and uh, the, actually the, the first person to to teach me C-Lot at the Magnitude was uh. His name's uh, um, Sifu Mike Macabenta. And um, I always liked the way he did his sea lot because he reminded me of a tank, you know? Because sea lot's really kind of a, we consider it a bully art, at least where I come from, you know? And that's, he was just, boom, moving through you, you know? And uh, that's, it's very aggressive. It's very aggressive. Yeah, and very they're like, aggressive. They eat but all the easy bones. too at the same time, you know? Like they're frozen. They eat all the bones. You yes. know the he hit all the bones, yeah. Like, you know that old European guy who eats the whole fucking fish, right? Then yeah. He's having a waste, yeah. They yeah, they yeah. they'll use everything. I that's what I like about Sea Lot. You know who I really like watching for Sea Lot is um, Sifu Bert, uh, Burton Richardson. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he's uh, got Paul, that Sea Lot for the streets. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's got some good stuff. And um, I like uh, like I love. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I love watching like eighties Munak. Yes. Yes, uh, yes, yes. He was yes. fucking. He was a bad man. He moved really, really well. Very explosive, fast twitch muscles. Um, Supercast said Bunak was his. Uh, I hope I don't quote this wrong. Was his favorite JKD psychopath. Oh. <laughs> I also love uh, one of my favorite JKD practitioners is uh, Sifu Yori, Yori Nakamura. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's fucking great. You watch his old shit. Like he's his shooto fighting. He came to Guru Den already a beast, you know, and then he loved JKD and 
Rudan's like, yo, teach your Shuto here. <laughs> he's really, <laughs> really, really good, man. I love watching. He's so clean, and that's one thing about him. He's very clean, very fast, very clean, though. Um, what advice would you give to anybody who has been training who's now thinking about teaching and are, and are reluctant to? Do it. Yeah. Just do it. Because it, uh, because I mean, like, I mean, you know, just what I do, like it opens up a whole nother world that you didn't even know existed. You know, like you see things differently, right? It's almost like you got bit by a vampire. And now you see the different, the night in a whole different light, you know, like that's, that's how I see it at least. Like as I've been teaching, like I'm start. I don't, I don't, cons so I was talking to one of my students about like what I felt was wrong with the way, um, at least I learned top keto, you know, where you stand in front of the person, you grab your wrist here and you do this and you do that. But like, you don't realize if someone's grabbing, if a guy is grabbing my wrist cross this way and pulling me, he's trying to probably punch me with the other hand. So why would I give up, you know, this hand, you know, things like that. And so while I was explaining to him that we were, we started working on, you know, I was like, let's, let's work on this. Let's figure out how we would get around that and still have the same kind of hop keto mentality in a sense, you know, as far as the wrist lock. And so I, I, I uncovered, I don't, I don't want to, cause I don't think I created the move. I'm pretty sure you, if I showed it to people, they'd be like, Oh, they've got that in this style and that in this style. And then, you know, cause there's only so many ways you can move, but it's a move. I definitely wasn't taught. And I feel like I kind of um, discovered it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just by, by pushing away the other debris and stuff like that, where I was like, oh, wow, yeah, this is, oh, shit, look, you can do, you know, like, and and I got there from teaching, just like, there's been so many moments here on this floor where, like, I'll just have these, like, fucking epiphanies, man, you know, where all of a sudden I'm like, whoa, and then I, I'm trying to explain it to my students, and they have no clue what I'm talking about because they're not there yet, you know? But I'm like, I go, whoa, dude, all I got to do is turn and this happens. And, you know, like, oh, shit, you know, like, and, and only through teaching, though, you know. I think that's the real process. I think that's the real process. It's like you take a kid on a field trip, right, and be like, hey, guys, scavenger hunt. You got to find fucking six acorns, two fucking chestnuts, right? Go, go nuts. Right. And they're going to look for it. Is it high? Is it low? I don't know. Do we need a stick to reach it? Yeah. How are we going to keep it back? They have to learn to fucking problem solve. Right. They yeah. have to learn how to problem solve. And you're there with them. Right? Yeah. It's like, I feel almost like the, it's such a simple analogy. I feel like almost like discovering a technique, it's like, you know, people say, well, this is my system. It's like, it doesn't belong to nobody, bro. It's, this is how we move. It's like Easter yeah. egg. It's like Easter eggs that the creator or yes. where in the video games yeah, yeah yeah they fucking hide this shit all over the fucking levels yeah and you wander through fucking life bumping into shit until you find <laughs> something yeah all right yeah and then when you find it it's not yours some i'm wearing shorts by the way that's fucking yeah, good, bro. <laughs> that's my only fan that's after that's after 11 o'clock <laughs> <laughs> like yeah so you you find that shit right and then like right. but that's why when you discover it, though, you know it's so much better because you did the math and you did the long division to get there. You yeah, have, exactly. You have a deeper understanding of it. And somebody just like, yeah. here it is. Look, the egg's behind the pillow. Yeah, exactly. You don't appreciate it at that point, right? Yeah. Okay. You know, my, my parents would always tell me, they're like, you know, I'm going to start making you buy your own shit because, you know, uh, you'll appreciate it more. When I buy it for you, you just break it. You know, <laughs> it's like, but it's the same thing here. You know, it's, you're not, you're not going to discover anything if it's just always given to you because, you know, and, and you can't do the work and the, like you said, the lawn division and stuff like that. So yeah, man, if someone was like, I think I really want to teach, but I just don't know, you know, I'd be like, bro, what's stopping you? You know what? Like you, you need to do it, you know, like unless there's some ailment that's stopping you or, you know, like you have no place to do it, you know, like you should, you should go out and freaking make it happen because it's going to be, so much if you love the martial arts that much, it's gonna be so much better for you. you know? Yeah, and you're I mean, gonna appreciate it that much more. And the long-term investment as an instructor is you keep teaching these people until they're like fucking at a level where they're challenging your ass. Yes. And That's then when they challenge your ass, yeah. and then when they challenge your ass, 
you're actually getting paid to be having trending partners. Right. Yeah, exactly. And Fucking you're just back. getting better. <laughs> yeah, because like, hey, I really want to work. Uh, you know, I want to work this. Who, what student do I know that wants to do this? But it's yeah. like, not, I'm just joking around. You're not using it. But you know what I'm trying to say? It's like, it's no, such a great yeah. Yeah. And when it gets yeah. to the point, when it gets to the point where your student is like, you know, he's really good. And it's like, now you're become training partners. Stop charging him. Now you're just yeah. training. Yeah, exactly. And now, yeah. you know, yeah. that's it. That's it. Your job's done. Yeah. You know what and I mean? Now you just you teach the newbies that are coming in. Exactly, know? bro. And then that's yeah. it. You create a fucking, you create a tribe. That's mm -hmm. the best way to do it. I think that's. You see, like every, we should get paid. There's nothing wrong with getting paid for, for fucking teaching martial arts because you know what? It's a skill and it's a fucking important skill. And you know what? People are going to find out how important it is when the fucking grocery stores don't have food. Exactly. You know right? what I mean? So all this, all these people that are investing themselves and keeping in shape and working out, that's mm -hmm. the population that's surviving at yep. least longer than the rest. You no, know? 100%. 100%. Yeah. But, uh, but, but like, I think, I think that's something maybe that people need to just, focus on a little bit more just a little bit more because it gives i think it gives them more fruit like that man because now it's like your student's gonna he's got this now he's gonna go check out something that you maybe you never learned All right and then bring it and back now, yeah and that's the real investment that's the return yeah. on your rsp right. You know right. I mean? right right yeah for sure yeah no yeah and that's what i tell i tell these guys all the time i'm like look i'm trying to get you guys to a point where I can, I can train with you and I can do things because as you guys get better, I can ramp it up. You know, I can only, so yeah. like, I, so like, I'm always on them. Like I go, you guys don't understand. I can tell when you're not practicing. I know when you are practicing and I know when you're not, it's evident when you're on the floor, you know? And so if you're not practicing, I can't move you up. And if I can't move you up, I can't do other things with you. And then you're here you know, but I'm trying to get you here. So that way we can get here together, you know, because I want to have fun too, you know? <laughs> so no, that's, yeah. I, I, I totally agree. And another cool dynamic too, is when you see, when you have, like, for me, I have students in my class and there's a couple of them where it's a very, very healthy rivalry. Very healthy. <laughs> right. I love it. And right? I love it. I fucking watch these guys. They partner up every class. And they just push each other. Right. Fuck yes. other because that right there, that is the fucking hum. And I don't like, hey guys, relax. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, no, fuck it. This is what we're here for. As, yeah, long as, let them go. Okay for it, as long as you guys are both okay for it, yep, and you guys yep. can handle it, you have enough like education where you can defend yourself. If you get caught, you get caught. Bro, This that's it. Because now they're showing everybody else the next level. Right. Yeah. Oh, they're, no, 100%. That's the ceiling. Oh, that's pretty high for me. I'll stick around. Right. Yeah. You know? And then it's going to get to a point where you hit a ceiling and everybody's kind of like, we're used to each other. We're not really growing anymore. We've known. Each and that's when those classes, like you said, and that's why I say you're smart when you mentioned it. That's why once a month you have to take your group of people to go spar at another gym. Right. Different energy. Yeah. Because I had these, I had my students right now. Cause like I said, I'm building this shit from scratch. I'm not, I'm not even really advertising it. It's like fucking over 20 students. Right. Nice. Still, so these guys will come, but they'll spar, they'll spar, they'll spar. And they're having fun. But I start to see that they're, they're getting to a point where like, they know what the other one's going to do. Right. So they don't, they don't feel like they're growing. They don't feel like, you know what I mean? It's like a stagnant. Yeah, for sure. As soon as I, see, I seen that, I was like, Hey guys, let's go for a road trip. They went out. Two things happened. Number one, they saw what they got hit with. So they all, and I told them before we left, I was like, pay attention to what, get you get caught with the most right that's on the that's one side of work coin, on. yeah on one side of coin pay attention to what you get caught with the most number two whatever works the most for you document that shit too right right all right so when we came back to the gym we had a post-mortem conversation and we f whatever the fuck that everybody got caught whatever was the common denominator that was the next theme for the month and we trained nice. that we trained yeah. that shit and at the end of the month we go spot check at that gym again. Right. What's yeah, the experience? Boom. Have we educated ourselves? Have we gotten better? Did we make a difference? Did we learn how to counter it? No? Shit. Bring it back to the board. Right. And that's what we do. And I dude, that's why I say you you're 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 doing a great job with that, man. You're doing a great job with that. That's Thanks. a good thing for your students. A hundred percent. Yeah, hundred appreciate hearing that for sure.
All right, man. I don't know if you got to go. We've been talking for like a minute 20. Uh, I'm good, buddy. Whatever, man. Yeah. You know? <laughs> All right, we'll a little bit more. We'll a little bit more. If you feel you got to go, go. I'm having a good time. So yeah. other than that, where do you think your weakest area is? Where's your weakest area in your training? Where do you feel you are the weakest? And uh, ground, ground game. So, what are you doing to rectify this? What do you the CSW right? Average Joe's, average Joe's yeah. over at yep, yep. Okay, so what's your approach? Because that's a very this is a very interesting topic. Because I tell you something right now, I don't like grappling myself that much. I don't. Uh, either. I'm okay at it. I'm okay at it. I'm nothing great. I think I'm good for like the average person that attacks me on the street. I definitely have an advantage. Yes. Um, competitive wise, I probably, you know, I don't know. I should compete more. That's actually my goal. I want to compete a little bit more in jujitsu. That I can do. I can do jujitsu still because I don't, I'm fucking 43 years old. You know, I spar with my guys. I'm not looking to fucking do the ring thing. I, but right. jujitsu, 100%. I love to do that. That'll keep you in shape. And I think that's more practical. You can go harder mm -hmm. without actually like worrying about concussion. Yeah. In truth. Right. Well, then you got to be smart at your age, right? You know, yeah, like, do yeah, I want to sure. be fucking I in, in my face? Bro, I get you. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, what what is your approach? Because jujitsu or grappling in, in general is very hard. It's like um, you're you're getting a lot of mat time to feel shit, but it's like the moments of success. Sometimes you don't even know how the fuck you did it, you know. And it takes a lot. Of, yeah. It takes a lot of getting tapped out before you actually tap somebody out. Could be demoralizing. So yeah. what is your approach when you go to a class? Do you set yourself a goal for the class? Are you just look going there as like a blank slate, just like whatever gets thrown at me gets – like how do you prepare yourself? Well, how do you – as a student, what do you do to, to get the most out of your class? Uh, so right now I definitely I definitely go as, as a blank slate for sure because I know nothing about it. Um, you know, catch is a slightly different than BJJ, not by much, but but it is, you know. Um, more cranks and shit, I find. Yeah, a lot, a lot of more um, um, leg locks, more, you know, different. Yeah, a lot of more pain, more pain and <laughs> stuff, you know. Um, and so I have I, I've told myself that I have I need to roll more because basically the way the way class will will go is um, he'll do like the conditioning warm up and then um, you you got a couple minutes where you're just, you know, practicing throws you know so he'll be like all right um three for three takedowns so you'll put three minutes on the clock i do three takedowns on you you do three takedowns on me you know we go back and forth and then at that that point he has a theme of how he what he wants to teach that night depending on the skill level uh in the classroom you know sometimes or are there competition coming up you know like naga and things like that um and so he'll and then he'll he'll teach that and then at the very end of the night um he'll you can you can stay for like an extra half hour and roll you know and um kind of for the longest time like i, I haven't really I, i've rolled maybe a couple times you know and so i'm like okay i i need to i need to again i'm not going to learn anything if i don't spar and so i have to, i have to wrestle you have in to order to i have to and so yeah. that actually this this whole new year kind of thing, you know, I'm not into big resolutions and stuff like that, but, but I definitely have, I'd already told myself like, okay. And that's another reason why I want to work on my cardio because I can, you know, grappling cardio is a lot different than stand up fight cardio as well. So, uh, so yeah, I, 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 I definitely want to, um, I, I need to, and I have to force myself because a lot of these guys that are in there, man, they're, they're really good, you know, like, so oh, yeah, always like, Cause they're always on the mat. Yeah, exactly. And so it's like yeah. I get in there, and like you said, it's demoralizing. I get in there, and I'm just like, bah, bah, okay, you know. It's like <laughs> yeah, but, but that's the thing. Like I, I was the same way too, man. Like I fucking hated it. Like I, I really did. Like, you know, you go from being good at something, and you go to something totally different, and it's just like fuck. Yeah. But it's so different. It's so different. Like you know, right. there's so many different styles standing up, but standing up to grappling, that's not just like doing a different thing it's not like just walking a different trail that's walking a trail in a different environment that's like 100%. from sand sand to snow yeah, so, yeah so some people they just and some people don't like grappling period they don't they can't even fucking deal with like you know it's some fucking dude's ass in your face and fucking 
knees on your fucking chin and yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. very invasive and and yes. your sometimes your body's contorted you got to learn how to take shallower breaths because you can't breathe regular your body's constricted yeah. you got to be able I to get claustrophobic that. man yeah so the best yeah. thing you can do for that uh somebody taught me this one time right and he's just like when you get there small like pr- take a deep breath in like i just uh, okay regulate that and then, even if it's a couple and just relax because the minute you start like fucking you're you're not going to be able to breathe it's constricted just like yeah, regulate your breath and just fucking chill and focus and like okay all right where am i feeling strong where's my base where's his hand what am i going to do here how do i okay leverage i need leverage what do i got to do right that's the privilege about grappling. I think that's why these like nerdy guys are really good at it. You know, these you see these small little. No, seriously. If you're a no, thinker, I'm, I'm, you're right. If you're a thinker, like like that's everything slows down. Yes. Yeah. yeah, everything slows down. You can buy time. It's right. like football. Yeah. It's like football. I relate it to football. Like when the crowd, then the they huddle and they're deciding what the play is going to be. That's what you're doing when you're like fucking just like holding your position and, and trying to look for what the play is going to be. And then right. once you discover what the play is, hut, you explode. Right. Yeah. And, you, and yeah. it's, it's yeah. great. So analogy, it's like, yeah. yeah. It's a game like that. It's like small explosive moments in time. Yeah. It's like war. It's like planned. Yeah. That's and my these guys, coach tells me too. He's like, he goes, you have to, he's like, you're, you're, you're trying to be too strong all the time. There's moments where you just need to relax and then you blast when it's time to blast, when you're going to move. And then after that, you relax, you know, I'm like, okay. But I still have the hardest time with that because, you know, I'm like I always want to be strong and, oh God, I got to push them off of me. And, you know, and then, uh, but yeah, I did that, that. That's definitely my weakest thing. And, and I definitely have already told myself the only way I am going to get better is I have, I have to grab, I have to put in work. Yeah. I have to put in the mat time. That's just, just what, it, what it is. Just go into it knowing you're going to suck and laugh yeah. at it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I laugh at yourself. When I when I started doing that, I had fucking fun. It was like a game now. It's like I knew it wasn't gonna win, but the only thing in class today is like I'll, I'll give you an example. My good friend, where I teach at his gym now, his name is uh, Scott Taylor, but we call him Wrenchy Scott Taylor because that's his rank, right? Okay. I love this guy. This guy, he could, he could steal my money. I couldn't be mad at him. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Those guys. You know what I mean? He's just a fucking super nice guy. I've never seen this guy angry. And uh, anyway, this guy choked me with the same fucking shit for three months. He was like, I would, I would drive. Listen, I, I shit you not. I would drive to class already angry. Like, yeah, I, not, he was gonna happen. I was like, it's not going to fucking happen tonight. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. And then I'd be driving home like, how the fuck did he get that again? <laughs> was so mad. But you know what? At first, it was like really like. <laughs> the only reason why I kept going back because I was mad. It's like I had to prove it. Like, no, they're not going to fucking do this. I'm going to win. Right? right? Yeah, right. And then that I'm going to win attitude that they provoked, that's when I got better because I had to problem solve every class. But when I went into class thinking, like, I can't lose, oh, fuck. It was miserable. And I think yeah. that's – and that's why it's so important for kids to learn jiu-jitsu young because they get over that shit. Like, I have to be perfect. I can't lose. Right. The ego. Yeah. No, they get used yeah, to right, yeah. it. You know what I mean? For sure. No, yeah, no, I like, yeah, because that's, that's kind of how I think about it is, is um, like, I sit there and it's like, okay, you will be like, all right, if you guys want to stay and roll, stay and roll. And I'll kind of look around the class and it's, you know, there's no one at my level at all. It's all these just dudes. I know they're just going to mop the floor with me. And I'm just like, I'm just not in the mood to get my ass kicked tonight, you know? And then I'll just be like, ah, screw it. I'll go home, you know? But now I've already told myself, you need to go get your ass kicked. And I've, I've, you know, and so that, that's definitely what's going to be happening. For you, know what we should do? you know what we should do, brother? We should start a challenge on Instagram. Instead of posting your reels, post you just getting choked out like every day that we, every, yeah. time you, every session you do, film yourself. And every time you get fucking beat with something, post it. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do that. Like and just learn to laugh. Learn to laugh. Because you know what? I bet you, I bet you people will start giving you tips. True. Yeah. Well, you know, and they're, they're a great group of guys out there too. Like we, we're constantly, hang on, my ear buds are dying. They're, we're constantly uh, joking around. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, a little bit of an echo, but I got you. Okay. Sorry, my, my earbuds died on me. We're good. Um, 
But yeah, no, we all go out to the bars out here and, um, you know, do karaoke and freaking drink and get stupid. And we're always in the school, like just laughing, you know, it's, it's raunchy joke time. You know what I mean? Like it's, they're all, they're all a great group of guys. So that they definitely want to help me out and, and they'll definitely help me out. But yeah, it's, it's more. Do you have any females in your classes? Not in the, not in the catch. Ah, okay. All right. Female student comes in. Do you try to choke her up? Would I try to choke her up? Yeah. Are you going to treat yes. her like your, like your male? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yes. And, and, and I'll, and I'll spar them the same too. A hundred percent. Cause well, I'm not doing her any good. And I'll yeah. even tell my students that like, cause you'll, you know, like I have female students uh, in, in class. And so, you know, sometimes when the guy students are doing stuff with her, they're like, really like, Oh, oh. I'm like, you're not doing yeah. her any, any favors. Yeah. You're not doing it. And she came here to learn how to fight. Yeah. You know, it, it, you got to be careful though. You got to be careful because like, I remember like rolling with some women and I, trust me, they could kick my ass rolling with some women. And like, you got to be careful on the backpack. Oh you know? yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like shit that like is, that. That is the one weird part. I'll, I'll give you that. There, there yeah. some, it's you know, like, how do you navigate that? Now, yeah. that? Honestly, it's like, first just show the respect because some girls, some girls won't give a shit about that. Yeah, some girls like, you know, like, exactly. like they'll know the difference if you're trying to be a fucking pig. But you know what I'm trying to say? Like if you're yes. fucking trying to backpack your hands by their tit, you know they're yeah. not gonna give a shit. You know what I mean? But like, yeah. I always it's just like every anybody, right? Like if you and me are training and we start rolling, I'm gonna be respectful. I'm not gonna fucking chin crank you right away. I'm not gonna try to do stupid shit to you. You know what I mean? We're All gonna right. just roll. We're just gonna roll. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do my thing, but I'm you know I'm not gonna fucking cover your mouth on the first day. You know what I mean? And shit like that. <laughs> That's stuff you do when you're like comfortable with your training partner, you're trying to push right. each other, you know what I mean? But yeah, I, I find that like that's one thing I gotta be careful about. And um, with regards to like teaching, I just make sure like if I have to move their hand or if I'm trying to like lift something, I always ask them first, Can I touch? Can I move your arm? Yes, I do. I, I'll say, Are you comfortable with me? Yeah, you can I move your arm? Are you okay yeah. if I move this for a second? Yes, okay, thank you. So I'll put yeah. your arm here because I never want them to think that you know. Um, that kind of shit. Cause like, yeah. uh, you gotta be respectful as uh, for me and stuff like that. But like also, um, and sometimes you don't know that female's history. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's the thing. Right. And like, uh, you gotta be careful because you know, some women are flirtatious mm -hmm. and some women just fucking take shit wrong. Yeah. yeah and, yeah. and some women have been fucking, uh, in really fucked up situations and yeah. they have trust issues. So, it's hard, man. Like teaching is not easy. You got to be careful how you approach. But like at the same time, okay, I have some students in my uh, class that when I spar her, like I'm not going to throw off. I don't throw my punches as hard at any of my students, first of all. But you know what I mean? But I, I, I'm like very cautious uh, of where I strike sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, if like you some know, guys, it's like you don't want her hitting you below the belt, right? Yeah. Like, I, like I'll punch tall guys. I'll punch them in the chest. Yeah, because I can't always reach their head, but I'll punch them in the chest. It'll stop them from coming forward. Yeah, but it also it's a good. It's a good. It's very quick for me. I can reach that easy, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not gonna go punch her in the chest. Right. You know what I'm trying right. to say? Yeah. So I was like, it's just small shit like that. Um, but like, I think it's important that uh, that yeah, you don't make them feel like uh, we're we're taking it too easy on you. Respectful, but we're still gonna push you because right. I, it's it, you're doing them a disservice at that point. Yes, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, and and then as they get more used to it, and more comfortable with it too, they're gonna be like, I don't care, come on, you know what I mean? Like so. Yeah, because you've built that trust, you know. And like for, for here's another thing too that I I had a hard time with, and I and I always make I always verbalize it. So, I I teach my students when they're sparring and stuff like that, don't stare at someone's eyes. You don't need to look them in the eyes and get no. caught up in the fucking bravado shit. Yeah. And don't stare at their hands. Or you're yeah. not you're gonna get kicked and don't stare yeah. at their feet, you're gonna get punched. So I always tell them stare like in your at the center of the chest. Yeah, yeah. get that peripheral going too. Yeah, I want to watch the shoulders move. Yep. And, and I can it. see the hips. Yep. I can see if the hips are gonna load a kick. I can see if the, the if it's a if it's a punch, it's the hip and the shoulder. You know, if All it's right. a kick, it might just be the kick. But there's always this like shift here. Right. And that's my signals. 
Yeah, exactly. But if I just look at this, I won't see the hips. And if I just look at the hips, I won't look at the shoulders. So I look at center mass. And that way, I don't even get caught up in the bravado or the intimidation thing. Like, you don't even exist. You're a puzzle. Yeah. Doesn't you're matter. A you're just you're a, a shape. Yeah, you're a thing. You're a puzzle. Yeah. And that's what I teach you. But like, but then when you partner up with students sometimes, you have to tell them, it's like, hey, listen, you know, I don't want you to think I'm fucking staring at your breasts. But when you, I want you to see the effect of it. I want you to stare at my chest. And I'm going to throw a kick or a punch. Okay. Right. And you're yeah. going to, anytime I move, whatever you think it is, I want you to block for that. Okay. Ready? You know, and then they start to like, they, differ, they differentiate this within that. They differentiate the smaller subtleties of whether it's going to be a kick or a punch. Right. And their brain is just loading. Like I tell my students too, I'm like, don't worry about like, oh my God, I got to like memorize this. Like it's a, I go, your brain is doing it for you. Just yeah. watch. It's we just, just need to see those cues. Yeah, right, because if you put my hands, I can do this and hit you with this one. You know, the, yeah. like the hey, look over here, pop. Yeah, yeah. Huh? but like if you're watching from its genesis, mm -hmm. before the arm comes out, the shoulder comes forward to throw it. Yeah, the hip comes forward to kick it. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah. if you watch the the torso, it's quicker than waiting for the hand, because the body comes before the hand. Yeah, it's already telling you. Yeah, so I, you know, I find like that's I it's a very important thing too for people who are sparring, and I look for that. And I'll do drills like that for like new people, right? So I'll, I'll just have them stand in front of each other, okay? Just stand and react. Ready? Okay. You're either gonna do one one kick or one or one punch, or either a round kick and a jab. That's it. That's their job. <laughs> but it's not to the count, and it's not like a fucking conveyor belt. Right. It's you have yeah. to react. Yeah. 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 And it's simple, but it, like, because you have to read. There's a language there. Yes. Yep. 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 No, 100%. That's why I try to tell them. I'm like, this is all like, you know, the touching and the, and the being close. Like, it's all, I'm, I'm, it's Braille to us in a sense, right? Like, it's, I'm, I'm reading you. I'm, I, you're telling me what's happening before it even happens. And as long yeah, as. Yeah, that's, that's with the tactile. That's when you're in contact. Yeah. See, that's why I think it's so important. Like, like drills when you're in contact, like lights off is good. One person blindfolded is good. Uh -huh. You know, like when I roll with my part with my instructors, sometimes I'll close my eyes. If I start getting overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. I just close my eyes and I just try to feel the shit out. You know, because that's what I'm relying on. I'm, re I'm relying on that sense. But when yeah. you're not connected, when you're not connected and you're moving around and you're throwing, that's now visual reaction. Yes, yeah, true. But it's the same, you know, it's the same storytelling that, like you're saying, you know what I mean? Yeah, you have to learn how to read shit when you're unconnected. Yeah. And yeah. then when you have a connection, you're not using your eyes anymore. Right. You know, you gotta use your you gotta use your sensitivity. Right? It's like yeah. it's like if if I stand in front of you and I say, Okay, uh, I'm gonna stand here, you're gonna stand here like this. I'm gonna stand in front of you, right? No touching, right? And I'm standing like this close to you. Okay, ready? Block my punch. You're not going to know which one's going to come. Right. Your time and space is very limited. By the time you see, by the time I move, you see what I do, and it goes to your brain, and the brain sends a signal, and your body moves, you're late. Yep. Right? And then I'll put my hands on you, on your wrists. Okay, ready? I'm going to attack you. I'm going to move my arm, block. The minute I move, you can move with it. Right. Because you felt it go. Right, right, right. Different sense. And your tactile sense is actually gives you a faster ability to respond than your visual, I believe. Your visual is good the farther you get away. Yes. The yeah. closer you become, now it's like everything's got to be tighter. And until it, there's a touch, now you can react fast. Yeah, you it's almost like, want to go in and, and touch them if you're that close at that point, you know? You ever watch Sopranos? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you remember when Tony was in the fucking uh, hospital and there was that old guy who was like down the hall who was a really smart dude and they were watching boxing together? Uh-huh. And he uses the analogy of they're like, they're both one. He's yes. like they're two balls of energy that are moving around until they fucking, they Clyde. bounce off each other. Yeah. Like, yeah. so they're not really people. They're just energy. It's just a manifestation yes. of energy. And that's honestly fighting, right? Because there's a static. It's... Yeah, and it's funny. I was actually that's how I was explaining it to my one of my my uh, students the other day. I'm like, 
We're, we, I, I said it more of like, we become like symbionts where we're working off of each other and living off of each other's energy and, and, and movement and stuff, you know, like it's a hundred percent. Yeah. That's crazy. So it's like, I think, I think identifying that. And I think that's what makes certain people are better at one trait. There are some people are better visual cue. They right. have great reactions, put them in striking. That's their nature. Right. They can still learn grappling, but their nature is like fish swims. They can learn how to jump out of water, but they swim. Right. You know, and then you have people. Then you have people who are slow for reaction, but like they, they can really have. They have a really good heightened hands-on sensitivity, kind of like, you know. Yeah. And so they're naturally going to be drawn to that. And and when you gotta identify who you are, what's your nature? It's like finding out your blood type for for weight loss. <laughs> Once you find someone's nature, you can really like, oh, you would be really good at this. Yes. Your body style, your your habits, your where you're naturally good at. This is the this is the art you need to go. And right. that's the problem. I think instructors want to keep everybody. Sometimes you gotta be like, no, go learn from this person. It'll benefit yeah. you. Yeah, well, because like you said, they're too worried about like their ego or making money or like they're not worried yeah. about the actual art or the person in, in, in general too. Right? Or they're just lying about or delusional about their own abilities. True. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one nobody wants to admit. <laughs> All right, brother, it's been a minute, uh, an hour forty. Listen, I had fun talking to you. As you can see, it's very laid back. I just like to shoot the shit. I learned from you. I learned from you. I, I took some insights away. Um, I like that number one, number two. I've seen something similar to that, but I like to get a better understanding of what your background was, and uh, and you're really you're really like down to earth humble dude man i i like that it's refreshing you know what i mean um, i same to you and i really appreciate you saying that it means a lot brother same all right man well listen thank you for being on uh, i'll talk to you again soon i yeah. wish you all the best with you and your students and uh yeah i'll share stuff man i'll sh I'll, I'll share you some stuff of what we're doing you share Please. me some stuff back well you know what i mean maybe one day we can all meet together and train that'd be awesome man hey and i'm really honored thank you for letting me on here man all right man take care god bless god bless you too man Later.